Hey there, gardener. This is one of my most prized plants in my garden. It's called shampoo ginger, also known as awapui. It is a tropical plant that produces flower cones that fill up with a fragrant liquid used as an all natural shampoo or added into body products because of its moisturizing properties. I'm gonna share all of my expert shampoo ginger growing tips so you can be successful growing it at home too. Make sure you watch until the very end because I share how I use the liquid from shampoo ginger and I'll review some of my top most frequently asked questions that I get about growing shampoo ginger. If you're new here, my name is Jara. I've been gardening all of my life and I'm a professional seed and plant nursery. I love to share my knowledge and teach others how to garden and grow food. So you've come to the right place if you want to improve your gardening skills. First off, what is shampoo ginger and why should you grow it? Maybe this is the first time you're hearing about this very unique plant. Shampoo ginger, also known as awapui, is a tropical plant native to Southeast Asia and widely cultivated in Hawaii. It is part of the ginger family, just like culinary ginger, turmeric, and galangal. This plant is known for its distinctive cone-shaped bright red or green flower heads, which produce a fragrant clear liquid that is used as shampoo, conditioner, or as a skin moisturizer. The liquid has some soap properties and will mildly suds up, thus why it's called shampoo ginger. Shampoo ginger can help smooth hair, reduce frizz, and repair dryness or damage. It can also combat dandruff, nourish the scalp, and enhance hair growth. Some believe that shampoo ginger promotes natural hair growth by stimulating hair follicles and roots. Shampoo ginger is used on the body to repair and hydrate dry or damaged skin. Traditionally, Hawaiians apply freshly squeezed shampoo ginger liquid directly onto their skin to soothe and nourish it. The rhizomes of shampoo ginger are edible and can be used in cooking. There are a few Hawaiian recipes that use it as an ingredient, but it has a more mild and bitter flavor when compared to common culinary ginger. To properly grow shampoo ginger, you have to understand its life cycle. This plant propagates and spreads via an extensive rhizome network that grows horizontally just a few inches under the soil surface. It is not started by seeds. Therefore, to grow it, you need to start it from a piece broken off the larger rhizome network. This plant loves the heat and really puts on a lot of new growth and flowers during the summer months. The plant can sense the cooler temperatures of fall and starts to decline in growth and turn yellow as it prepares to go dormant for the winter. All the upper vegetative growth will die back to the ground. This happens even in my zone 10A garden where it barely gets under 35 degrees Fahrenheit. What is important is that the ground does not freeze because if the rhizomes die, then there goes the whole plant. So where can you get some shampoo ginger plants or rhizomes? It can be hard to find shampoo ginger plants or rhizomes because it's very seasonal. During the summer, I can easily locate the rhizomes under the ground and dig them out to propagate. But once fall arrives and all of this upper foliage dies back, I can't find them anymore. I have to wait until they sprout new growth in late spring. Usually I notice them sprouting out of the ground in April or May, then I start digging them out to propagate again. If you're in a tropical or subtropical area, you might be able to find some at your local nurseries or find shampoo ginger rhizomes or plants for sale online. Depending on the time of year and if I have stock, I do sell plants on my website. I will put a link in the description below to where you can find them on my website. Starting a plant from a rhizome piece can be a little difficult. I can't tell you how many people contact me saying their shampoo ginger rhizome has not sprouted and it's been literally months. This can be the case, sometimes it does take months until the conditions are ideal before sprouting from a rhizome piece, especially if you're trying to sprout it during the fall and winter months when it goes dormant anyways. So if you're new to growing shampoo ginger, I highly recommend you just start with a plant. Now that you have a plant, let's choose the perfect spot to plant it in your garden. If you're in garden zones 9B and up where your ground does not freeze, you can safely plant it outside in the ground. I caution you though, the rhizome spread underground and in just a couple of years you will have a huge bushy patch of shampoo ginger. This is great if you have the space. At my second garden on my aunt's property I have a few acres of growing space so we have several patches of shampoo ginger and that's completely fine. But here at my home garden which is very small I like to grow shampoo ginger in grow bags to control it a little bit. And I have this small patch that I just keep in check in front of my house kind of acting like a tropical landscape plant. If you're in a colder climate where the ground freezes it will kill the rhizomes under the ground so you will have to grow this in some sort of container like grow bags and bring it inside for the winter. Or another option is you can dig out the rhizomes out of the ground before your first winter frost and store them in a cool dry dark spot to replant again in spring. At maturity shampoo ginger plants can produce six foot tall leaves so yeah it's kind of a big plant but it's gorgeous the leaves are lush green and shiny it definitely gives a tropical look. But no worries if you're growing it in a pot just cut back the leaves before bringing it inside 
it will not hurt the plant. As long as the rhizomes don't die from freezing or rotting, it will sprout again. Treat it like a tropical house plant if you decide to bring it indoors. As far as lighting, I find that they grow much better in a spot that gets some bright morning sun with afternoon shade, which is exactly what I have going on here. I have my Barbados cherry kind of arching over in this area, providing my shampoo ginger plants with some shade during the hottest parts of the day, which is the afternoon. So this is a great choice to grow underneath your trees or fruit trees. When growing in full sun, the leaves often just get burned or they just look yellow, not very healthy. It's not picky about the soil either. I'm growing it in my native sandy Florida soil with no amendments. I don't even fertilize it once this plant gets established. It doesn't need much, but if you grow it in soil rich in organic matter, it will grow very well too. If you're growing it in a container or grow bag, just use some regular potting mix. I also use a lot of wood chips, so at least once a year, I put a nice thick layer of wood chips and that's all it needs. Shampoo ginger is a tropical plant and loves consistent soil moisture, but not sitting in water because that will rot out the rhizomes and just kill the whole plant. It does okay with some quick floods, like during my Florida summers when we get monsoon rains every day, or if a hurricane comes, everything gets soaked and flooded, but it drains away within a few hours. It seems to like a defined rainy season, just like a rainforest. If you're in a dry state like California, Texas, or Arizona, pay extra attention to soil moisture. Don't let it have a long drought period. Mature and established plants can handle some period of drought, but not newly planted plants. And I get asked all the time, how long will it take for my shampoo ginger plant to start blooming? This all depends on the strength or health and maturity of the rhizome network, which is the life force of this plant. The rhizome network needs to be mature enough to support output of blooms. Just to give you an idea, I sell shampoo ginger plants in four inch size pots like this. If grown in ideal conditions, it can start blooming in one year's time after planting. If you're starting from a small rhizome piece, it will take much longer. Blooms have a unique pine cone shape, hence why shampoo ginger is often called pine cone ginger. They start off green and turn red at maturity. The plant collects water, which mixes in the blooms or pine cones to create a loose type of jelly-like liquid that has a wonderful floral ginger scent. This liquid is very hydrating, thus why it is used in bath, body, and hair products. The famous hair product brand Paul Mitchell has a whole shampoo ginger farm in Hawaii because they use awapui as an ingredient in their shampoos and conditioners. The blooms start filling up with liquid even while still green in color. In fact, I think it has more of a floral scent when harvested from pine cones that are still green. Just squeeze the pine cone to release liquid. I catch the liquid with a bowl. Another thing to note when harvesting the liquid out of shampoo ginger, if the flower cone is dirty, or especially when they get older, more mature, it can drop some soil or whatever dirt it might have into your bowl when you harvest the liquid. And the liquid color can vary. Sometimes it's really clear. I notice it being more clear when you harvest from a green pine cone versus the red ones. I mean, it doesn't matter. The color doesn't mean it's bad or something like that. But sometimes I do like to just run this through a fine mesh strainer to get some of those little dirt particles out. As you can see, I'm harvesting this one out from a green pine cone and the liquid is definitely more clear in color. This will refill with more liquid. Because of this, I don't like to just cut the pine cone blooms off the plant, but some people like to use the pine cones in floral arrangements. So if that's why you're growing it, then just cut away. The pine cones will continue to fill up with liquid all the way through the red stage. The blooms last for several weeks before finally just dying back. So let me show you how to use shampoo ginger or awapui liquid. The easiest way to use this liquid is to rub it into your skin. You don't have to wash this off. I also use it as a hair mask. I find it's best to wash your hair with some regular shampoo first so it's nice and clean, then massage shampoo ginger liquid into the hair and scalp. Let it sit for 20 minutes before rinsing off with lukewarm water. I definitely notice that my hair is more shiny and soft after applying a shampoo ginger hair mask. I refrigerate any leftover liquid, that way it stays good for a few days. Since this plant goes dormant during the fall and winter, I frequently harvest the liquid during the summer and freeze it in ice cube trays. That way I have some to use as needed during the winter. I want to end this video with a few frequently asked questions that I get about growing shampoo ginger because I know they're coming. Number one, is shampoo ginger toxic if ingested by humans, cats, dogs, or other pets? The answer to this is no. The entire plant is not toxic. In fact, many use the liquid as an all-natural shampoo for their pets. And if your pets or maybe your toddler accidentally ends up eating any portion of this plant, they shouldn't get sick either because again, it's non-toxic. But I don't encourage you to just be eating this raw. Number two, how much does shampoo ginger liquid suds up or get bubbly? Shampoo ginger liquid does have a small amount of saponins in it, which is a cleansing agent that gets a tiny bit bubbly. It's not going to suds up like a bar of soap, 
soap or regular shampoo though. So if your hair is very greasy or dirty already, it's not gonna be enough to clean it all out. If your hair is pretty clean, then it should be enough. You can also mix shampoo ginger liquid with some shampoo or Castile soap to get a more bubbly mixture. Number three, when I use the liquid from shampoo ginger, my hair feels greasy. If you don't wash the liquid out, then yes, it can leave your hair feeling a little bit greasy. Use it as a hair mask for like 20 minutes and then wash it out to prevent this. Don't use it like a leave-in conditioner. Number four, is shampoo ginger edible? The roots are an ingredient in some Hawaiian dishes, so it is edible, but it doesn't have much of a flavor like compared to regular culinary ginger. Number five, is shampoo ginger safe for sensitive skin? Generally, shampoo ginger is safe for most skin types, including sensitive skin, but it's always best to do a patch test before using it extensively. Number six, how often should I use shampoo ginger on my hair or skin? You can use shampoo ginger as often as needed, similar to your regular shampoo or body wash. Many people use it several times a week for the best results. Number seven, can I just buy the liquid? Possibly, I don't sell the liquid because it's an all natural substance with no preservatives. If left at room temperature, it goes bad in like three days. That is why I don't sell it, but I wouldn't doubt if someone out there was. Maybe a local farmer's market or Etsy shop. Number eight, what are some other uses or recipes for shampoo ginger? The easiest thing is to find a recipe for a soap bar or other bath and body products that uses aloe vera and switch that ingredient out for shampoo ginger liquid since they both have a similar consistency. Right now I'm making a body moisturizer and a shampoo. I will post the videos on how I make them, so check back for more. I hope you're inspired to try growing shampoo ginger yourself. If you have any unique uses for shampoo ginger or recipes, please comment below and share. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my gardening tutorials. I recommend you watch this video next all about how I use another unique and useful tropical plant called Moringa to improve my health and add nutrients back into my garden. Happy gardening and I'll see you in the next video.